Please bear with me in this video. I moved and then I caught a cold and apparently I'm still recovering from both. Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. I'm Kit and this will likely be my last Lauren Chen video. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I thankfully don't know Lauren or any of her associates, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the stupidity they have allegedly engaged in. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, on to the reason we're all here. I put it to a vote and the majority want me to talk about this, so here we are. And it occurs to me that not everyone knows what's been going on and since I'm not a lawyer, I've chosen two articles to read about the situation, which will be linked below to peruse at your leisure, as well as a video by Legal Eagle who is a lawyer, and then I will offer my commentary. First is an article from The Tennessean, What to Know About Tenant Media, Tennessee Company Linked to Russian Propagandists, published September 4th when all this first became public. An indictment unsealed Wednesday alleges that a Russian state-controlled media outlet financed a Tennessee company. The indictment doesn't name the company, but a description of the firm matches the online content creation company Tenant Media. The indictment accuses two Russian nationals employed by Kremlin-operated media outlet Russia Today of funneling nearly $10 million to covertly fund and direct the Tennessee company. Here's what we know about Tenant Media and its possible connection with the accusations laid out in the indictment. What is Tenant Media? On its website, Tenant Media describes itself as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. That's also how the company referenced in the indictment characterizes itself. Tenant Media creates and posts conservative content on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Rumble, and X, formerly known as Twitter. The company's commentators, identified on its website as its talent, include well-known names from conservative media. They are Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, Lauren Southern, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, and Matt Christensen. Who started Tenant Media? It appears Tenant Media was created by Lauren Chen, a Canadian-born YouTuber and blogger, and a man named Liam Donovan, who appears to be her husband, based on information from several sources. Donovan identifies himself as the president of Tenant Media in his bio on X, and as Chen's husband in his bio on Instagram. Chen, a well-known name in conservative media, formerly posted to YouTube under the name Romy Millennial. Canadian business records show Romy Millennial Incorporated was registered to Liam Donovan and Lauren Yu Sum Tam, likely the social media personality's legal name. Business records from the Tennessee Secretary of State's website show Roman USA Corps, which registered its assumed name Tenant Media in May 2023, was incorporated in Tennessee on June 19, 2022. Tennessee business records identify Liam Donovan as the company's registered agent. Lauren Tam was previously listed in records. There is not a phone number listed for Tenant Media in the Secretary of State's business records or on the company's website. No phone number was listed for either Tam or Donovan in an online database accessed by the Tennessean. Tenant Media's principal office is at a Green Hills office building in Nashville, state business records show. Other addresses previously associated with Tenant Media are a two-story, four-bedroom home in Brentwood and a building on Confederate Drive in Franklin. Is Tenant Media named in the indictment alleging Russian influence? No, but there are several descriptions of the company in the indictment that match Tenant Media. The indictment states the company was run in Tennessee and described itself on its website as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. Tennessee-based company Tenant Media has the same message on its homepage. Tenant Media Media was incorporated the day the unnamed Tennessee company in the indictment was incorporated. The indictment says the unnamed Tennessee company has two founders, one of which described the Tennessee company as a subsidiary of a founder's Canadian company. Lauren Tam, likely Chen's legal name, is listed in business records for both Roaming Millennial in Canada and Roman USA Corps, Tenant Media's official name. What does the indictment say? The indictment accuses two Russian nationals who worked for Russia Today, a Russian state-controlled media outlet, of funneling nearly $10 million to a Tennessee-based online content creation company to publish English-language videos on social media sites like TikTok, Instagram, X, and YouTube. The Tennessee company is part of an entire empire of covert projects created to shape public opinion in Western audiences, according to the indictment. Many of the videos contained commentary on events and issues like immigration, inflation, and domestic and foreign policy in the United States, according to the indictment. There are two Russian suspects accused of funneling the money to the company, and they were both at large. They are charged with a conspiracy to violate the Foreign Agents Registration Act and conspiracy to commit money laundering, which carry a five-year and 20-year sentence, respectively, if convicted. What is Russia Today? Russia Today is a media outlet that is operated by the Russian government. The indictment unsealed Wednesday states that, for nearly two decades, Russia Today has promoted the objectives of the government of Russia by publishing disinformation and propaganda, leveraging its international network to amplify the government of Russia's message to foreign audiences, and using its guise as a conventional media outlet to lend credibility to that message. 
After Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Russia Today was forced to cease formal operations in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the European Union, the federal indictment states. But as RT itself has boasted, despite its post-March 2022 bans on broadcasting and lack of formal distribution channels in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the European Union, the government of Russia continues to use RT to direct disinformation and propaganda at Western audiences, according to the indictment. In response to the allegations in the indictment unsealed Wednesday, Russia Today responded with ridicule. Three things are certain in life death, taxes, and RT's interference in the U.S. elections, the media outlet told Reuters. What has Tenet Media and its commentators said in response? Tenet Media did not respond to a message the Tennessean sent it seeking comment through a comment box online. However, several Tenet Media commentators released statements on social media stating that they had full editorial control over the content they created that was posted to Tenet Media. Tim Poole said that he and the other personalities and commentators on Tenet Media were deceived and are victims. The indictment states that the Tennessee company's two founders masked the company's true true source of funding when contracting with two commentators, falsely stating its funding came from a private investor named Edward Gregorian, a fictional persona. A year ago, a media startup pitched my company to provide content as an independent contractor. Our lawyers negotiated a standard arm's length deal, which was later terminated, Benny Johnson wrote in a post on X. We are disturbed by the allegations in today's indictment, which make it clear that myself and other influencers were victims in this alleged scheme. Matt Christensen ended his post on X by writing, every word is from me and me alone. Johnson and Poole, in a since deleted post, incorrectly stated that the indictment was leaked. It was not. A federal judge unsealed the indictment Wednesday. Next is an article from Mother Jones. Tenant media shutters after being accused of taking 10 million in covert Kremlin funding, published September 6th. A contributor for Tenant Media announced on Twitter Thursday night that the company has abruptly shuttered one day after the Department of Justice unsealed an indictment that accused it of being covertly funded by employees of a Russian state-controlled media outlet. Taylor Hansen, a self-described field reporter for the outlet, wrote that Tenant has ended after the DOJ indictment. Tenant Media's founders, Canadian conservative YouTuber Lauren Chen and her husband Liam Donovan, have not publicly commented on the allegations against Tenet. Nor has Canadian far-right activist Lauren Southern, a Tenet contributor who appeared in many of their videos. Other prominent contributors to the site, including far-right commentator Tim Poole, describe themselves as victims of the Tenet scandal who were unaware that employees of RT, the Russian state media entity, were secretly funding the company. Poole announced on Thursday that he has been contacted by federal investigators writing, the FBI I believes I have information relevant to an ongoing criminal investigation and have requested a voluntary interview. I will be offering my assistance in this matter. The Daily Beast reported that Chen's contract with Blaze TV, where she also made regular appearances, has been terminated. The company has also deleted her page on their website and wiped episodes of her podcast, Suedo Intellectual, from Spotify. YouTube told NBC News that it had deleted Tenet Media's channel and four others operated by Chen in light of the indictment and after careful review, writing the steps were part of ongoing efforts to combat coordinated influence operations. For now, Tenant Media's Twitter profile, Instagram page, TikTok, and Rumble pages all remain online, though none have been updated since the indictment was announced. So that's that. I'm not familiar with Benny Johnson, Taylor Hansen, or Matt Christensen, but it seems to me they were all too happy to create the sort of content they were hired to create for Tenant without the money. So I question the business instincts of RT. I also question the intelligence of Lauren and her husband. I keep asking myself why someone would do this and the answer always comes back to money, but seriously? I know conservatives have a low opinion of the American government, but did they really think they wouldn't get caught? So far they haven't been charged with anything, so maybe they're right, but it still seems like a big risk. But I guess the reward was enough to justify it. This does remind me of a Jeff Holiday video I watched a year or two ago where he mentioned being offered a lot of money to spout right-wing talking points and you could see which creators took the money by the hard right turn in their content. And I'm pretty sure Lauren Chen was one of the people he mentioned as taking the money. And I can see it. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned before how disinterested Lauren sounded when she was talking in some videos, not to mention how outlandish some of the things she said were. And I've gotten a fair amount of comments about how the commenter used to watch Lauren and she's changed so much. So has anyone watched a video from Tenet? I saw one last year. It was Rachel Wilson, maybe Isabella Moody and Tim Pool, Lauren Chen and Just Pearly Things, mainly debating whether or not women should vote, which was a quick debate because they all agreed women shouldn't, but it was also a lot of Lauren and Pearl going back and forth. They really don't like each other, and I bet Pearl is gleeful right now. And 
For the record, I'm not gleeful. I didn't like Lauren's content. Actually, I didn't like any of these folks' content, but I'm never hoping for someone to do something illegal, especially since she's influenced so many people over the years. And just because she seems to have been doing something shady, well, that influence isn't just going to go away. And it just so happens Lauren and company were trying to influence people into distrusting the American government. So I would be willing to bet a lot of their fans, instead of being disgusted that they were funded by Russia, are actually going to blame the government for trying to disrupt free speech. Just a guess though, I would love to be wrong. On the whole, my reaction is, huh, I didn't see this coming, but now that it has, I'm not really surprised. Before I end the video, I do want to say that I can see Tim Poole and Dave Rubin being foolish enough to say a large amount of money for minimal effort, sign me up, but evidence does seem to show that Lauren Chen and her husband were aware of who they were doing business with. And I suspect Lauren Southern's silence is because even if she didn't know, she had a suspicion. But please share your thoughts below. Are you familiar with these influencers? Have you watched anything from Tenet? Are you surprised that Lauren Chen was allegedly doing something sketchy? And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Some very boy band hair right there.